Good morning, KotlinCon. Thank you for joining us for this talk this morning. Uh, and today we're going to give just a quick 15 minute talk on leveraging KMP for navigation in the McDonald's app. I'm Anthony. Uh, I'm here because I talk too much. And I'm a mobile developer at Umain. Uh, started with React Native, nowadays doing Android, KMP, and a little bit of iOS. So with me today is. Hello, everybody. I'm Cass. I am a development lead at Umain, also working for a McDonald's client, and currently I am the development lead for our multi-platform team uh, for McDonald's. So, Umain, you might not have heard about it before, but we are a Swedish software consultancy. Uh, we were founded in 2001. We do a lot of things, mostly web mobile, some cool emerging tech like AR, VR, and some other stuff. AI, of course. Uh, we have a lot of clients, big and small, but one of our big ones is McDonald's. Uh, we do the McDonald's app uh, for 62 markets all around the world. Of course, also Denmark. So the first thing we did when we landed here on Wednesday was what we call some production testing. <laughs> Lunch on the, on the company. So the app is quite big since 2019. We have about 720 million installs. And the app is way older than that, but that's the time when we tracked it. And about two years ago, we did a full rewrite of the app. Two and a half years ago by now, we did a full rewrite of the app from the ground up to Kotlin Multiplatform. And we went all the way. So Everything is called multi-platform, except for the UI. The UI is native, but everything, view models, everything below, that's as much as physically possible is in Kotlin multi-platform. If you want to know more about that, uh, we gave a talk about that two years ago right here at KotlinConf. So at the end of our slides, you'll find some uh, QR code so you can look at that talk as well. Uh, but maybe a short summary, Anthony. So bearing in mind, we set out to use KMP. We wanted to make sure that our UI was fully native on both platforms, which we managed to achieve. Um, and that's keeping the clients as slim as possible with absolutely zero logic inside of the clients, all inside KMP. So what about navigation? So navigation can be quite difficult. It's a very, very native thing. Both platforms have their own ways of doing it. Um, we wanted to try and ensure that we keep it as much of the actual navigation inside the clients as possible. So, but we did want a KMP-driven solution that would work well for both platforms. So we built it. We tried it, we broke it, fixed it, and now we're here to talk to you a little bit to, about, to you about it. So, like as previously said a little bit, we did not want KMP to take care of the logical navigation. Um, things like back swipes, um, back presses, tab navigators are a very client-orientated thing. Um, with that in mind, you could say that KMP basically puppets the clients, which it does. However, it does take care of all of the where it's going and the parameters being passed to both clients. We wanted it to be easily extendable as much as humanly possible. Um, and an important thing is that the native UI should not care in what context that it, that it lives in. It should not care what's behind it. It should not care what is possibly in front of it, only where it's going next and what parameters are being passed to the next place. Finally, any screen should be able to navigate to any other screen. So if I want my login to go to the checkout, it should be able to do that. Will it break? Catastrophically. But it should be able to do that. Um, all right. We're going to fly through a lot of code in the next 10 minutes. And I thought I'd bring a laser pointer. But of course, nobody in the back is going to see that. So bear with us. Um, we started the KMP side. Uh, routes. Everybody knows what a route is. Every screen, one screen has one route. It's just a sealed class in KMP. And that holds a bunch of classes, one data class for every route, where we hold some information like the route name, route parameters, and some more fancy stuff like, for example, route guards, which we get into a little bit later. We take those routes and we put them into navigation events. Very similar thing again, a sealed class that holds information about what type of navigation you're doing it and some information about how we should do that navigation. So that could be as simple as a push where we take that route object, stick it in there, send it to the clients. Uh, but it can be way more fancy, like push us modal and we send the modal type, or we send information about the navigation, how should we do the exact uh, navigation animation, these kind of things. And a pop, of course, doesn't need any information. can be as complex or as simple as you want. If we have those two, we take them together into a navigation implementation. This gets quite complicated. This is simplified and still quite a lot. But all of this basically is uh, an observable, which is just a, a fancy shared flow. Um, that the client subscribe to for navigation events and updates, and then any of our KMP side view models, at any point they can call a function to basically want to go to a specific route, and that basically build, wraps it in a navigation event uh, with that specific route and sends it to the clients. 
Um, what does it look on the client side? So yeah, we'll start off with the iOS side. So for those that have not seen this, thank you. For those that haven't seen this before, this is a pretty basic iOS navigation. Um, I won't go too in deep into it, but the only thing it's not really need to really pay attention to is the path. So the stack for iOS is pretty basic. It's pretty much just an array that contains the client information that we send in from KMP. So the root, the params, the type. We then listen to the navigation events that are sent through from KMP. And then handle navigation event is pretty much just listening for the type of navigation that's coming. So if it's a pop, we, top, we pop the top screen off the stack. If it's a modal, we can close the modal. And if it's a push, we just add a new route to the, to the stack or add a new modal. Next. So this is the actual navigation part that comes from iOS. Um, pretty much the same here. We're listening for the navigation that's coming through. And as you can see in the body, the, we, the navigation stack takes the actual route that the navigation handler is receiving as a param and then it gets a view. So if you look to the right-hand side, all a view is is pretty much taking the route that we send from KMP and then mapping it to a Swift UI view. We, on Android, it's even more simpler. Just like in iOS, we are listening to, the, we're listening to an observable that's listening to the routes and the params coming from KMP. And again, just like iOS, we then listen for the type of navigation. So here, we pop, so we navigate up. If we're pushing, we're navigating to something. But if you want to switch them around for whatever reason, you're welcome to do so. It's quite, it's quite flexible that way. On the right-hand side, we have the nav host. Uh, and this is just, list, again, listening to the params and a route that is sent from KMP before they get mapped to a composable route. And on a very basic level, that's all you need to have a navigation that's puppeted from KMP but still native. But the thing is, now that we've built this interface, this contract, how to pass navigation data back and forward, now we can start building stuff on top of it on the KMP side. So route parameters. It's me again. So Cass spoke a little bit earlier about the talk that we did here two years ago. Um, the reason I'm bringing this up now is because with this, we use an inbuilt state management solution that we call Revolver. Um, so some of the code you might see here, especially in regards to, route, in regards to view models, might not make sense. But if you want to know a bit more about Revolver, then you'll see the QR code at the end of this presentation, which might make it fit together a lot better. But say I want to go to account. I press a button within the clients. Um, KMP will then create a push, sending me to account. But what actually happens? Well, first we serialize the roots of the params. And with this, we use KTOR to encode that to a string. And then we encode that to a URL query component. Next, in Android, I'm sure many of you are very familiar with this. So this is a basic nav root template. Um, one really good thing to add is that the, pram, the, the, the top three things are practically the same for us on every single screen. And once it receives the event from KMP, we then swap the params and the root from KMP into this. As I said earlier, we then listen to the, listen to the type. So I won't go too much into it. And then at the bottom, you can see it being, hand, being passed into the new screen we're going to with the root and the arguments in the composable. We then pass this back into our view model. Um, I won't go into too much detail about it, but basically we then deserialize those parameters. So again, using KTOR, where we decode, from, we decode it from a string and from a URL query component into an object, and then we can then use it however we want. And this allows, uh, this allows us to basically send uh, like data classes, uh, serializable data classes from KMP to KMP through the navigation system without the clients ever knowing it. We're not going to show you the iOS side because it's basically exactly the same, and we don't have a lot of time. I spoke about route guards. Uh, if people don't know what route guards are, it's basically this concept that allows you to evaluate certain preconditions before you do a navigation. So say I'm on the home screen and I want to go to the account screen, but I'm not authenticated. I don't want every screen to have to have a, an authentication check before saying, okay, navigate. I want a home to say, so I just want to go to account. So we take our account route, which has a list of route guards, in this case, a login route guard. And when the navigation happens, our navigation system can evaluate those route guards one by one. And evaluating basically means I look at the route that's coming in with my origin and destination. Is that allowed? So in this case, I could do check if I'm authenticated or not. And then I could modify the route parameters, modify it a little bit. I could also just completely say, ah, actually, it's totally not allowed. Push to the login route instead. 
and we'll go to log around instead. And you can find an endless list of route guards to start stacking them on top of each other and start doing like quite complex behavior without that your actual view models need to know or care about all these like complex checks before every navigation. Uh, what Anthony basically explained right now is we basically built this URL-based navigation with our real name and our query parameters. And once you have that, it's actually very easy to add deep links on top of that. And it's also fully in KMP, so whatever uh, a deep link comes in, whether it's a deep link on iOS or an intent on Android, they just pass it into KMP, um, which uses Gator again to do some fancy URL stuff, stick the URL, we match the URL host to one of our routes. If that's it, if there's no parameters that it's, we can just emit this as any other um, navigation event. If they have parameters, uh, we basically can take those parameters and do a little bit of hacky stuff for now, but to uh, deserialize these into um, uh, a data class again, which we can then use like any other uh, route parameter. And there's a lot more to this. And uh, we basically want to say, like, yes, you built this basic interface, this puppeting system, and then you can just start building layers and layers and layers on top of it completely in KMP. And it's completely controlled from KMP, and the clients do not need to know or care. Um, it's that easy, right? In some ways, yeah. So as we just showed you, a very basic implementation of how to do this on both KMP and in the clients. The setup is quite simple, like I said, as you've seen. And we found that this has been so far infinitely expandable. Um, one thing that I really like about this is that this works perfectly well with both clients. So, and the, you, the navigation looks pretty similar. So say I have a modal coming up in iOS. Mo iOS has its own ways of doing modal. Pop-ups from the bottom of the screen. Android does exactly, will look exactly the same way. So that's a really good thing about it. But of course, there are challenges. Um, one thing we will say is that you definitely want to build your, your apps with this type of navigation in mind. Um, you can build it on top of legacy. We won't really recommend that. And if you really want to know why we don't recommend that, come and ask us, because we have stories for you. Um, but yeah, it's also really important to think about when building this, to build it in a cross multi-platform kind of way. So if you built something in Android main, you built something in iOS main, suddenly there's absolutely no point having this anymore. So trying to make sure that you can keep it fit, to fit together for all three, and you're good to go. So Cass, why don't you tell everyone what's next for us? So officially, we finished all this navigation work a year ago. But you know, it's, it's never done. Uh, we are always iterating on this, adding new layers on top, and, and modifying it as we go. Um, with that in mind, we were, gonna, we were making an open source library to make it a little bit easier for you to try this in your own projects and experimenting. But like any good developer excuse, we completely ran out of time before Kotlin Conf. So um, instead, what we've done for now uh, is we have created a demo project, which you can find over here, which shows all the code and slides and a lot more that sort of shows off how this system works from KMP and how you can build it uh, in your own uh, project. We spoke about how we migrated the entire app and uh, Revolver, our state management library for view models on the KMP side, which you can find there as well, uh, if that interests you. Um, we don't really have time for questions here on stage, but there's quite a few people from Humane walking around here, so you'll find us after the talk here or just outside, and you can ask any questions, and uh, we would love to help you with that. That being said, uh, thank you so much. Don't forget to vote if you like the talk. <laughs>